So whenever Mary appears throughout history, one of her deep desires as a mother is for us to be led to Jesus Christ. She very much lives out the mission of this parish, which is to be led to lead others into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And so very fittingly, she's our patroness, St. Mary's. And she points us to Jesus because she wants us to experience the joy that she's discovered of being united with her son's heart. And especially in that powerful offering which he made to the Father as the eternal high priest, as the one who took not just the blood of animals, or the flesh of bulls, but took his very life and offered it completely to the Father. And it even says in Scripture, when I am lifted up, I will draw all to myself. They will know that I am. So Mary is one of those who's drawn up right in the very beginning, because in the, in the moment of her conception, she's already given this powerful grace that was won for her by her son at the cross. So poured out backwards in time, she experienced it, and she's living this union with her son. And she wants us to come into that beautiful secret of what's going on in Jesus' heart and his father's heart. And that experience is what, G what, what Mary points us to in Jesus' Eucharistic sacrifice. If we really understand this, then the Mass opens up in a deeper way, and it, it speaks very powerfully to this Gospel today. Jesus has just told them, one of you will betray me. It also talks about how Jesus said to Judas, go and do what you have to do quickly. He goes, and it says it was night. He says, I am going away. I will send the advocate. But they're all starting to get afraid. And Jesus says these words, don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. You have faith in my Father. And the Father and I are one, so why don't you have faith in my words? And he talks about the Father's house. He says, I'm going there to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. And that's the key to understand the mystery of the Eucharist. And it's something that Mary, as she was pondering these things over and over in her heart, and as she would receive Holy Communion from St. John, sometimes we forget about that fact, that the Mass continued after that first Mass that Jesus instituted in the Eucharist. It continued on throughout Mary's life after the resurrection. And she lived with St. John, who took care of her. St. John was a priest. And so he would offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and he would say to Mary, the body of Christ. Just imagine all of that. St. John Paul II has this beautiful, this beautiful um, reflection on what was it like for the mother of God, the mother of Jesus, to once again receive her son back inside of her. Mothers, what would it be like for you, that powerful intimacy of your little child growing within you and having that opportunity to have them come back to that deep closeness there in which you are just holding them inside of you, literally. Mary experienced that mystery every time she received Holy Communion. And as she entered more deeply into this Eucharistic mystery, 
which she saw connected to the mystery of the cross, she points us to Jesus here, saying, the Lord wants to fulfill this deep within you, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and that she says, in a certain sense, she points saying, Jesus said, where I am, my, de my deepest desire is that you also may be there. And so what is this place where the Lord wants to bring us? He wants to bring us into the heart of love. And this is something that St. Faustina, I was just reading this this morning, this is one of the reasons why we need to go to do holy hours, to go to adoration, is because it was during this holy hour that the Lord opened her heart as she was meditating on that, that beautiful moment frozen in time of this offering of Jesus to the Father. And she said words like this. I'm going to summarize it. She said she had a vision of the Last Supper. And she saw Jesus raise his eyes before the consecration to his Father. And there was this eternal moment there which she said only in heaven will know what actually was deeply expressed in the midst of that. We have a little of that in, in John's Gospel where he's praying and he's speaking to his Father, but the depth of that. And St. Faustina would say, and his eyes were like, they were like on fire with love. And there was this deep, deep longing of pouring himself all the way, offering himself all the way to the Father. And there was this powerful moment of union between Father and Son, of the Father saying, here is my plan for the human race. But Jesus saying totally, being one with that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, saying, yes. And this offering is an offering of love. It's not a father saying, well, I'm going to have to crush you down, but it's Jesus saying, I'm offering myself. I'm taking all of the brokenness of humanity. I'm taking everything because I've become one of them, and now I'm going to pour everything out and bring all of humanity to my father so that where I am, they also may be. This is the way, the truth, and the life, and it's Jesus. And St. Faustina would then say, in the, moment of the, in the moment of the consecration, so this is all happening right before Jesus says those words, this is my body, this is my blood. St. Faustina said, in the moment of consecration, rest was satiated. The love was consummated. And what was left over was the, in a sense, the external playing out of what was already unified in that moment of, of, of the Eucharist. So that whole offering, everything that was happening, it wasn't like Jesus was merely just kind of doing this ritual and saying, okay, now I'm going to go do the real thing. But in the midst of that Eucharist, there's this powerful moment of Jesus already offering everything that he is in this powerful loving communion in the unity of the Holy Spirit to the Father. And there is this consummation, there's this unity of love it's the perfect, like, shining forth of the Trinity. And this is happening in a hidden way, sort of interior to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But then in the cross, it gets shown forth. Do you see how the two of them are so connected? So everything that we see in the cross, in the crucifixion, death, and resurrection of the Lord, already in a hidden way, known in its depth between Father, Son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all of that that's just hidden, that St. Faustina had a little tiny window into, already happened. 
And then it was played out through the mystery of the cross and the death. And Jesus is wanting us to enter into that same loving offering that he made on the night before he was betrayed and that was revealed to the world in this powerful image of crucified love. So when we come to Mass, is this what we're coming for? Are we coming because it's something, well, I, I just want to get Jesus, I, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm, it's a good thing to do. Are we coming in to this mystery of Jesus looking at the Father, his eyes filled with the fire of love, his heart just breaking open with this joy of being united to his Father, and the Father looking down and saying, this is my Son. In a certain sense, I've begotten him this day. This is what that first reading and what the second reading is about. And it doesn't mean that Jesus comes into existence at that moment. He's the eternally begotten son of the Father. So he always was. There wasn't a time that he wasn't. But this whole idea of when it says in the Psalms, you are my son, this day I've begotten you, that's actually a psalm about when the king was crowned. And there was a sense of when he was crowned, God looked upon him and brought him into the family as an adopted son. The king of Israel became that. So in a powerful way, Jesus gets on his throne. He's crowned. And in a very real, in a very real way, he's brought into this powerful, and he brings us into this powerful kingship of reigning from the cross, saying, all of death no more has sting, because my reign is supreme. I'm the light that conquers the darkness, and the darkness has no chance. And this is why the Lord says, don't let your hearts be troubled because this is what I'm doing. And to the extent that we're led by our Blessed Mother deeper into this mystery, which is something that she had in her, in her heart, and so in the midst of her pain, in the midst of her suffering, in the midst of her loss, she still could have that deep wellspring of hope. She says, come into this rest so that where Jesus is, you also may be. And where Jesus is, you will find peace. You will find joy. In the midst of a broken world, you will still be able to sing and be caught up into the mystery of the dance of love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.